So I have been checking out a few motherboard vendor BIOS pages. Uh, so for particular boards that I happen to have on hand, like the Fatality AB350 Gaming K4, I have that one in the closet, so this is a potential victim. I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, but I'm just checking boards that I have to see if any of them support Zen 2 out of the box or with a BIOS update. Well, obviously not out of the box, but yeah. With a BIOS flash, can we get these to work with Zen 2? I actually found a thread on Reddit that mentions some vendors supporting A320, which is definitely not officially supported by AMD. They told us that explicitly at Computex that there was going to be no official support for the A320 chipset on the new Zen 2 chips. And for obvious reasons, A320 is a, a very, very bare bones chipset, and usually power delivery on those boards is crap. But I found a gigabyte BIOS, the F40 BIOS, for the A320M dash. S2H, which I have, actually Will has it, I'm gonna go get it from Will so I can run these tests, and apparently, apparently, and they just updated this on June 28th, you have support for third gen Ryzen CPUs in this latest BIOS. If that's the case, then we can try to run our 12 core 24 thread 3900X on a $40 motherboard. I'll have to get that. I don't know if I'm going to include that in this video. What I know I can do for sure right now, because I have this board here, is flash the latest ASRock BIOS onto the AB350 Gaming K4 and see if we can get a fully stable functioning system uh, with our 12 core packed into it. So, yeah, let's give that a shot. So first, let's talk about why a beefy VRM setup is preferable to one that is uh, minuscule, to say the least. The first uh, variable to consider is temperature. VRMs will get extremely hot, and typically motherboard manufacturers will design their VRM arrays around heat sinks like this one here that you're seeing that has uh, integrated fins wrapping all the way around the VRM stacks. And that's actually really nice. It increases surface area, contact to the air, so that uh, heat can dissipate faster. Boards like these are meant to run 12 core, 16 core chips overclocked for long amounts of time under heavy load scenarios. And you want beefy VR VRMs to be able to deliver that power in a stable manner. You want as little voltage ripple as possible. They can handle higher power workloads, so more current. And they're gonna get hot, but VR modules designed to handle higher workloads for longer amounts of time can typically handle the heat a bit better. Cheap VRMs and cheap MOSFETs will get extremely hot very fast, even under small workloads, and that tends to be what you find on some cheaper chipsets, especially A320 chipsets. As for this ASRock board here, things are definitely stripped down. I expect VRMs and MOSFETs will run hotter, and we're gonna measure those temperatures as we're configuring the 12 core, assuming we can get it to work with this BIOS. There's also a few extra steps we need to do. Uh, this isn't just a normal BIOS flash according to ASRock, so we're gonna follow the steps on their website just to be safe, and then we'll see if we can even boot into uh, our, our operating system with the 12 core installed. That would be the first victory, and the second victory would be overclocking. We're gonna try overclocking, uh, although I, I should note that most Zen 2 processors will benefit from not overclocking, just enable precision boost overdrive in your BIOS and you, you'll be fine. I'll, I should say though, with this board here, this particular chipset, you're not gonna have PBO. I'm, you're just gonna have precision boost and XFR which I'm not sure how those are gonna vibe with Zen 2, so <laughs> we'll see. This is just one big experiment. Hopefully, if anything, your morbid curiosities are satisfied. All right, so right now I've got a 1700X in here, and that's because you do need a compatible CPU with the BIOS in question in order to flash a new BIOS. You can't boot into your BIOS without a CPU in most cases. Uh, so what we have in there again, 1700. I have the 3900X is cooler, the stock cooler actually on top of that. And we're going to uh, go ahead and start it jump it right here well, there we go ASRock calls theirs instant flash you'll see M flash from MSI you'll see Q flash I believe from Gigabyte I want to say so they're all called different things but basically it's a utility built into the BIOS to update itself and as long as you have I just totally missed my window to get into the as long as you have the extracted BIOS folder in the thumb drive that's plugged into your motherboard, you should be able to flash it without a hitch. So 
Let's try that again. Okay, so this took uh, a little while. I actually had to kind of troubleshoot and test out a few different configs here. ASRock does not mention anything about needing to update to a P5 BIOS before updating to P5.8. The issue is I updated to P3.4, you can see here, and when I did that, P5.8 wasn't showing up in the Instant Flash tool. So that told me that whatever BIOS we were running was not uh, recent enough to detect or allow us to flash the latest 5.8 BIOS. So I tried 5.0, I tried 5.4. 5.4 worked. This was the latest uh, AGSA update. The, the, actually, I think the BIOS update after this was for Pinnacle Ridge. I didn't use that BIOS, I just used 5.4. And now we have 5.8 showing up. So if you're doing this with this exact board, I guess uh, this is the order of operations if you have a very old BIOS. That was pretty loud thunder out there. I'm gonna click enter, we're gonna flash this BIOS now, and then hopefully our motherboard will be prepped for our 12 core 3900X. All right, so the BIOS flashed successfully. We hit okay, the system's gonna reboot. I'm gonna boot into the, into the operating system just to be on the safe side, especially with this kind of BIOS, it's more experimental. I, I'm, I just I wanna make sure the system's stable first. And then uh, once that is confirmed, then we're gonna turn the PC off. We're gonna swap the 1700X I have in here for the 3900X and see if we can even get it to post. And if it posts, then we'll run a few other tests. We'll try manually overclocking. Now remember, we don't have Precision Boost 2 on these older chipset boards. So we're gonna have a few issues more than likely with RAM. We're also gonna have a few issues with uh, the I guess equivalent of turbo boost, right? So when the max boost on the 3900X is advertised at what, 4.6 gigahertz? When, I got really hot. When you uh, when you see that on the box, that's if you're running it with a board that natively supports the chip or with a BIOS update. In this case though, I'm not too sure if we're gonna get those max boost clocks. If we don't, then manually overclocking would be a viable option. But then we also have to consider the fact that VRM MOSFET config on this board is not technically enough for a 12 core CPU at 105 watt TDP, so we'll, we'll see. It is going to be so weird running a 500, well, four, yeah, with 499, so $500 CPU in a sub $100 motherboard. It's just It'd be really strange. Always want to give these a little twist before you lift them because sometimes, actually more times than not in my experience, the CPU will stick to the cooler and you'll end up ripping it out of the socket while it's latched. Okay, we're gonna reapply thermal compound, of course. Let's go ahead and swap this out. You know, if I'm being completely honest, I don't even think this is gonna work. I would be very surprised if this PC even posted. Uh, and I'm not expecting much in the way of overclocking headroom. I mean, maybe we can hit the frequencies we want, around 4.2 gigahertz, all 12 cores, but we might have some super toasty VRMs in response to that on this board. So is it all that viable? No. Do I recommend you do this? No. I just feel like I need to say that again. All right, you guys are going to see this at the same time I do. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, at least we tried. So let's jump it and hope that it posts. Why is that fan not turning? What's up? Okay, oh, there it goes. Okay. Um, if it posts, that'd be awesome. It'd be good news. Fan stops again. Seems like it's power cycling. I don't think it's, I don't think it's going anywhere. Oh, we have a post. Is it gonna do anything else? I don't know. Well, let's see, let's see. I think it just, just powered off again. All right, just give it a few. Give it a few tries, see if anything happens.
it's trying so hard. It really is. There, oh, there it goes. Got little rotating spheres. <laughs> it's just gonna put it actually posted. Awesome. I'm not gonna edit any of that. What you just saw, you're gonna see all that straight up. So it rebooted at least five times to to get this thing to stick. And now we have a black screen. Nope. Okay, maybe it's just a video driver. I didn't reinstall Windows when we made the CPU swap, so that might be one of the reasons why. Um, wow. So, a 12-core CPU working on a B350 board. That's something. It's not something that AMD officially said they were going to support. They left it in the hands of the vendors. And so, yeah, they're basically just saying, ASRock, Gigabyte, Asus, MSI, if you guys want to support these CPUs in your older motherboards, by all means be our guest, but it's on you. We're not going to force you, obviously, to support them. And uh, so it's just up to whether or not these vendors are going to be good guys and grandfather you in if you have an older board like this. And if you have a, a cheaper board as well, like this AB350 Gaming K4 from Azeroc, um, again, not recommending you guys throw 12-core CPUs into these motherboards, but maybe something like a 3600 would be totally viable for this. And we'll have to test to be sure, but I have a good feeling. I mean, it's a 60 watt, 65 watt TDP chip, but uh, it, it, it should it should be fine on a board like this. It wouldn't be optimal, but it still should be fine. Um, you get to tinker a bit with RAM and stuff. It's gonna be a bit harder on the older chipset, but still possible. So if you don't want to upgrade your motherboard right away, but you still want Zen 2, there are some boards out there that support it, and you're going to have to do some weird things and flash multiple BIOSes to work up to the one that supports your CP more than likely, like what I had to do in this video. All right, now I don't really want to run through my entire benchmark suite to see if this is stable. What I will do, though, is open up Ida64 Engineer and see, first off, how well the stock 3900X cooler is going to do at, at cooling the chip, uh, but we're also going to check the... VRM temps, about, well, as much as we can on this board. I'm sure there aren't many sensors on it, but we will see if it opens up. There we go. And all right, so you can see all 24. Sorry, I know that glare is pretty bad. If I can drop the ISO, here we go. Nope, oh, wrong way. That's better, sorry about that. Okay, so all 24 threads and uh, all 12 cores, and right now, Looks like they're looks like they're boosting to around 4.25 gigahertz. Is it lot? Is it overclocked to 4.2? Maybe my overclock. That doesn't make sense. Maybe my overclock stuck from before. It, 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 which in which case I'd be worried about temps. Looks like temperatures right now are pretty stable. 37C uh, main board. I'm not sure where these temp sensors are. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult to, to, to check VRM temps. I will say that I could probe them, but it's not gonna be a very reliable. It's gonna read a lower temperature. But uh, anyway, let's just run Ida64 and see if we have a stable stable system here. So I'm gonna open up system stability test and swing that over so you guys can see and. Uh, Let's just stress the CPU. Okay, we do have VRM. Looks like we have VRM temps up here. I'm not sure if those are reliable or not, but I'm gonna leave it up here and we'll just see what happens. So I'm gonna click start now, stressing uh, everything CPU related. So CPU, FPU, and uh, system cache. I'm gonna click start. And system got pretty loud, but see how temps do. Okay, so while this is running here, and sorry that the system's pretty loud, obviously it's uh, <laughs> it's under full load or near full load, uh, you can see that current frequencies for all 12 cores, I can scroll, I can't scroll down, anyway, most of these are around four gigahertz, and that's still above the base frequency. Now there, there are obviously going to be issues to hash out with BIOSes uh, and, and, and certain conflicts in software that'll prevent these from boosting all the way up to what they should be, especially per core, but I'd say this is still fairly decent considering uh, what we're, you know, our, our, our certain scenarios that we're, that we're in right now. Temperatures, uh, 62 degrees Celsius right now on the CPU. That's pretty good um, for, you know, just a stock run with the stock cooler. And yeah, I'm pretty sure our v 
I think our VRM temps are wrong. I will say though, one of the one of the things I, I would stress, especially if you have a board that doesn't doesn't technically support 12 cores out of the box, uh, or, or even eight cores and overclocking for that matter, get a top flow cooler like the AMD stock cooler because it'll push air down onto the VRMs and will cool them off significantly better than say an AIO or just kind of letting them passively radiate heat. So yeah, I mean. It works. And look, this speaks volumes about the platform. I'm really impressed that uh, that this even booted up, to be honest. And that was the whole point of this video. I just wanted to see if it would work. I wanted to find a motherboard in the closet that I had that was a B3 series board that uh, had a supposedly Zen 2 supported BIOS out there. Asrock did it. They proved that it works. And I mean, that's good. Now, do I recommend this setup here, obviously not. Like This is like a worst case scenario. I recommend again a top flow cooler so you can actively, or at least somewhat actively cool your VRMs because this is, these are pretty toasty. I will say that and I just stopped the stress test, um, but nothing severely alarming, at least up front. And how often are you gonna fully stress your CP, let's be real. Uh, so it works, if you're curious, it's really gonna depend on the vendor. ASRock made it work here, and uh, there, there are even some instances of like A320 boards again working. I'm going to try that out in the next video. Uh, we also have our official Ryzen 9 3900X um, review coming out, so stay tuned for that. I just, while I'm compiling a bunch of data, because there's a ton of like 20 graphs in that video, uh, I wanted to kind of fool around and see if this works, and I also wanted to be one of the first to actually try it. So uh, hopefully you haven't seen this before. If you have, oh well, I mean at least you have a second take on this. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. If you guys like this video, if you appreciated the, I don't know, the morbid curiosity I had for this chipset and support, um, give this video a like, that would be appreciated. And I will catch you in the next one. More experimenting to do, we got lots of stuff. I'm gonna try to passively cool the 3700X with a passive CPU cooler, that'll be interesting. And a few more experiments along with our official reviews, again, of the 3900X, as well as Navi, the 5700 and the 5700X. So stay tuned for those. This is Science Studio, thanks for watching. And thanks for, what am I gonna say here? Thanks for, yeah, thanks for learning with us. I totally butchered that ending, but I'm not gonna cut it, whatever.